Hello and welcome back to your own channel Indian Defense Analysis where we bring to you all the latest development happening in the defense sector. On 22nd December, the Ministry of Defense has given acceptance of necessity for Rs 84,328 crore for the modernization of Indian Armed Forces. We have made a video last night and it was a quick one where we missed few details. In fact, I did one small mistake also in yesterday's video where I said the mountain gun system has a rate of fire of 3 rounds in 30 minutes where it is 3 rounds in 30 seconds. This was highlighted by Deepak Singh, so thanks Deepak for that. In today's video, we will cover all proposal in detail and few important weapons which we have not covered yesterday. So talking about the AOM, as we have reported that uh, the approval has been given for 24 capital equation proposals. These proposals include 6 for Army, 6 for Air Force and 10 for Navy and 2 for Indian Coast Guard. The government is focused on making India because 21 projects worth Rs 82,127 crore or 97.4% of total value is to be procured from indigenous sources. So this is good news. Now first we'll look into the big ticket items of Indian Army. The AON has been given for three big platforms. The first one is 354 light tank for Rs 17,500 crore. Second one is 300 mounted gun system for Rs 7,500 crore. And third one is for 480 futuristic infantry combat vehicles FICVs for Rs 20,000 crore. Apart from these big ticket items, approval has also been given for 80,000 ballistic helmets with enhanced protection levels for frontline soldiers. Now let's talk about Indian Air Force. Earlier we have reported that Air Force is preparing proposal worth Rs 1400 crore for NGARM or Rudram-1 anti-radiation missiles which has been approved by DAC. The other items approved for Air Force includes long-range guided bombs, range augmentation kit for conventional bombs and advanced surveillance systems. The approval of guided bombs and range augmentation kit is good move as it will boost Indian Air Force standoff strike capability at much lower cost as the guidance kit can convert the cheap unguided bombs into a precision strike weapon. Talking about Indian Navy, the approval has been given for the procurement of naval anti-ship missiles. Now this is very important development from the perspective of Navy and DRDO as it proves that NASM or Naval Anti-Ship Missile development is near completion or completed. The first reported trial of this missile was on 18th May 2022 from a Sea King helicopter. The NASM is a short-range air-launched anti-ship missile. It has a range between 5 to 55 kilometers. DIDO is also working on its future version which are NASM MR medium range, NASM LR long range. The NASM SR which is being developed will be integrated with MH60R Romeo helicopter which is being procured from US Seeking helicopters and ALH Mark III helicopters. The other items approved for Indian Navy includes multi-purpose vessels and high endurance autonomous vessels. Now these two vessels are new platform which worth discussing. So talking about the multi-purpose vessels or MPVs, these vessels has also been offered by LNT. The vessel is being designed to undertake maritime surveillance, patrolling, search and rescue mission. These vessels are also capable of launch and recovery of torpedoes, towing of other vessels, limited capacity hospital service and logistic support to island territory. It will have a displacement of 3,750 ton with a max speed of 50 knot. It has an endurance of uh, 4,500 miles at 10 knots. It can host 8 officers and 108 sailors. It will feature a 30mm and 12.7mm gun, anti-submarine warfare rocket, heavy and lightweight torpedo launchers. It will also have self-defense capability and chaff launcher. It can launch and recover surface and aerial targets as well. The next vessel worth discussing is High Endurance Autonomous Vehicles. Yesterday DAC has given a win for this vessel as well. 
Now these are the unmanned vessels which will have capability to detect the underwater mines and many of you have complained that why Indian Navy does not procure mine sweepers. So this one does the job and it can be used for the mine countermeasures. They can be also used for ISR missions. If integrated with sonar, they can also detect submarines. The DIDO's HEA-UV has a displacement of 6 tons and length of 9.75 meters, diameter of 1 meter. It can operate at a max depth of 300 meters, which is pretty decent. The unmanned underwater vessel has an endurance of 15 days at a speed of 3 knots. It has a maximum speed of 8 knots. So I would say this is a very impressive development and very good for Indian Navy. In July 2022, it was reported that DIDO was in process to procure mobile satellite system for HEA-UV, which means that this system can even talk to satellites. So this mobile satellite system which DRDO is procuring gets activated when HEA-UV comes on surface. This helps to transfer data and mission details with the control station using the Rukmini satellite. The procurement of uh, next generation offshore patrol vessel for Coast Guard has also been approved. Apart from these, on 22nd December, the government of India has given go-ahead to a proposal by Geological Survey of India GSI, to purchase two coastal vessels worth Rs 245.07 crore. The induction of these vessels are also important and worth discussing here because it will increase the exploration activities of GSI in marine sphere which has huge resource of heavy minerals within the territorial waters of east and west coast of India. This was today's update. Please let us know your views on this in comment section. If you like the video, do not forget to like, share and subscribe. With this, I would like to say goodbye and Jai Hind. We'll soon back with more interesting and amazing development happening in the defense sector.